Good morning. It is Saturday. I love Saturday. Who doesn't love Saturday? And yet here I sit in my office, so... Mm, maybe I didn't plan things out too well this week. But I do love me some Saturday. And today is the Saturday before Father's Day, which should make it even better. We are planning our... <clears throat> drive through service tomorrow for 9 a.m. and it's supposed to be rather warm. We moved it to 9 so it wouldn't be unbearably hot, but it's still supposed to be already in the upper 80s. A little bit of chance of rain, probably not, but it might. So did Pastor Ron blow the call on this one and we should have stayed home? Stay tuned. We'll know tomorrow. But we're going to meet in the parking lot tomorrow morning. Come be with us 9 a.m. 2401 Lebanon Avenue. Shiloh, Illinois. So if you're like some people watching this in Omaha, you know who you are. You got time to get here. Just drive. Or if you're watching down there in the wilds of uh, Georgia, you know who you are. You can get here too. Come on up. Hey, lunch on you. <laughs> well, Debbie's promised me that after church is over with tomorrow, she knows that I'll be tired and hot and sweaty. I sweat a lot. One of my friends, Jesse, pointed that out this week. Thanks, Jess. Appreciate that. It helped. Made me feel good all day long. You sure do sweat a lot for a fat guy. She didn't say the last part. I did. <sighs> Who calls the church on a Saturday? Who calls the church on a Saturday? They'll leave a message. If you're a deacon, I'll check it. Don't worry. Where were we? Yeah, tomorrow, Father's Day, Debbie promised me that after coming home hot, tired, and sweaty, that she would rub my feet all day long and shower me with ice chips. And she thinks I won't take her up on that. <laughs> after 42 years, you'd think she'd know better. Well, I want to look at a scripture with you today that you've heard before. It's Matthew eleven twenty-eight. We're just going to look at it briefly because it is a weekend. And it is a time of rest. By the way, I forgot my tripod. So sorry about this. The office is going over a railroad track right now. That's what's going on. But um, Matthew 20, 11, 28 says, Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. And it ends with, and I'll give you rest for your souls. There's somewhere in between. I don't want to get it wrong. But this is the part I wanted to talk about anyway. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. Could you use some of that right about now? Say yes. So I don't feel so all alone. I'm counting the minutes. A week from right now, I'll be on vacation. And I'm going someplace far, far away where telephones don't work. Text messages don't roam. I don't mean that in the cellular sense. They don't come there. I don't know where that is yet, but I'm going to figure it out. But for now, I just need a little rest, and you need a little rest. And this is a weekend. It's Saturday going into Sunday, which we call the Lord's Day, and we need rest. So I want you to understand something about this scripture. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. That isn't talking so much about your physical labor. If you're a ditch digger, you're still going to be a ditch digger. And you're still going to get tired. And there's, like we said yesterday with the whole sweat equation, there's, there's, there's reasons for that. There's profit in that. Sweating's a good thing to do. Um, as long as you're at the right time and the right reason. And you shower afterward. No, this is talking about a different kind of rest. It's talking about an emotional rest, really. Spiritual and emotional rest. Jesus doesn't say, come to me and be happy when you get here. He doesn't say, be optimistic when you arrive. This is a rest that's just the opposite of that. Because rest is radical. Because it's honest. We can come to Jesus regardless of how we're feeling, distracted, numb, discouraged, just down. 
I, I used to go to a lot of um, youth pastor retreats at monasteries, and then I started to go to some just on my own, all alone to monasteries, and I fell in love with monasteries. It's been about a decade since I've been to one, so I'm due. Now it's not been that long, but a while. And a friend of mine who's a spiritual director in San Diego, we were talking one day, and she was stressing the need in my life to go and get away and to rest, to find spiritual and emotional rest. And she said to me, Ron, it's the most countercultural thing you can do. And this is a di as directive as you'll ever hear me be. You need to go away and rest or you're going to explode. I appreciated that. And I took her direction. And I went and I rested and I came home a changed person. Much happier, much more at ease, much more in touch with myself and most of all with God. And much more pleasant to be around for other people. Because I needed that so much. I was, I was just worn out. I was tired. And that, whether I knew it or not, made me crabby. Well, sometimes today I find myself walking on that raw edge of crabbiness. Day before yesterday, I got a paper cut right there on that finger. I was opening an envelope that one of you sent me. Thanks. Don't send dangerous weapons to me. And an envelope... That's a dangerous weapon to me. I got a paper cut and it still hurts when I put Germex on it. So it's still raw. But I, but I remember from that, I learned from that, that, you know, things in your life just suddenly get raw and painful and hard and difficult. And you gotta, you gotta stop that sometimes. And this is not about paper cuts, it's about life. And it's about doing life in a smart way. And I need to start getting smarter again. I need to start taking better care again. Because when I got that paper cut, I got cranky. It was just a paper cut. But I got cranky over that. I got upset. It made me mad. And that made me mad at everything. Because I got a paper cut, okay? Come to me, y'all who are weary and heavy laden. That's echoing in my head right now because he promised to give me rest for my soul. And by golly, it's time. So I can go to him cranky and on edge and weary. And he says that regardless of how I come, he's going to give me rest if I'll sit with him. Like my friend Beth said, it's the most countercultural thing you can do is to rest because the world's continually crying, go, 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 run, 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 hurry, 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 do more, be more, accomplish more. Have you noticed yet that the world's nuts? I mean, it really is. It's nuts. It'll drive you to do things that you ought not do, that you were never intended to do. And in the middle of it all, the countercultural Jesus whispers, come to me. You are weary. You're carrying heavy loads. You need to rest, and I'll give you rest if you'll come. So all of that just to say it's Saturday. Tomorrow's Sunday. Dad's especially for you, Father's Day. Take a load off. Join me in that. When I finish speaking tomorrow here at church, I may not say another word all day long, except to hold out my empty plate and say, more please, rest. And ladies, that goes for you too. We don't want you to work yourself to death. Your husband loves you. Rest. Go to Jesus. He's calling you. You don't need a better excuse than that. So have a good Saturday. Father, we need rest that only you can give. Rest that will relax and refresh our souls that will make us better people come Monday because we've been with Jesus on Saturday and Sunday. So make us smart enough, countercultural enough to go do it and to be changed in the process. In Jesus' name, amen. So I say it every day and I'll say it again. I love you. I want the best for you. I want Jesus for you. 
So go connect to him today, all right? We'll talk again Monday. Take care.